Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. We have a special treat in our midst this morning. I would like to introduce to you a man of God who has demonstrated many godly principles, integrity, a student of the word, leadership, and faith. Not to mention, he's an expert in our state's number one industry, agriculture. He is a UGA grad and has three sons with his lovely wife, Jessica. The minister before us is not only a preacher of God's word, he is also appointed by the Biden administration to our state executive director of USDA Farm Service Agency, hailing all the way from Warner Robins via Athens, Georgia, Minister, Mr. Arthur Tripp. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker, Representative Thomas, everyone gathered today. You know, I keep hearing that today is truly an important day. You know, there are a lot of people inside and outside of this building that are praying harder than they've ever prayed before, hoping that their bill can somehow make it to the other side of the chamber. Well, I've got some good news. And no, my authority as chaplain does not grant me the authority to deem bills as passed. But I've got even better news, because I know of someone who has experience in crossing over. You see, I am reminded of Mark 4, 35, when Jesus left the crowd behind as he crossed over to the other side to pray. Come on, now, y'all know the story when Jesus was traveling to the other side and the storm broke out. You see, all too often, even in our own lives, we refuse to leave the crowd and to go to the other side. But you see, each of us, we must follow the steps of our Savior to go to the other side. Perhaps it's to take a tough vote, which may not be popular, but yet somehow we know in the depths of our soul that's the right thing to do. You see, in order for us to continue to move our state forward and to remain as the best state in the nation. We're going to need some people who are willing to cross over party lines, to cross over political ideologies, and to forsake the status quo so that we can continue to march forward toward a better tomorrow. Look, I know it's not easy. It's not going to be popular, nor is it going to be comfortable, which is why it is so important that we lean into the immovable passage of Galatians 6-9, which states, let us not be weary in well-doing, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we faint not. You know, I know each of us are familiar with seasons, and for those of us who are closely tied to the field of agriculture, we know all too well there's a time and a season for everything, a season to sow, a season to grow, and a season to harvest. You know, there could be said that there are a lot of similarities between politics and agriculture. For example, when each of you first won your elections, that was a time of triumph and happiness. And now that we're nearly midway through the session, I'm sure a few of you may have felt your bumps and bruises along the way. But even now, several iconic leaders that once graced these hallways and this chamber with their presence, they are now held closely in our minds and in our spirits. And so that's why it's so important that we lean into Galatians 6-9, because while our time on this planet may be finite, the fruits of our labor will continue on. And so while we work, while we churn, and while we wrestle, we must remember to not become weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary when your committee chair may call that early committee hearing, because, you know, there may be a young child that's counting on you to show up and to speak on their behalf. Let us not be weary as we've seemingly held our 10th Teleton Hall of the year, because you know there may just be a younger version of you waiting on the other line, waiting to be inspired. Let us not be weary when we are called to sometimes go against the grain to ruffle a few political feathers in this political sphere all because of that burning desire that led you to this chamber. It's trying to break out. That idea that you wrestled with, you know, it might just be so crazy that it just might work. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you have been equipped and prepared for this journey. You have been chosen for such a time as this. And my prayer for us today is that we do not give up, that we do not relent. And I know at times it will seem impossible. It's going to seem hard. But do not worry, for scripture tells us that joy cometh in the morning, and we will reap a harvest if we faint not. So to those of you that are hoping to uh, get your bill to the other side of the chamber and perhaps all the way to the governor's desk, I wish you well. But let us be confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So let us move forward in love, caring for, for one another, taking care of our neighbor even if they don't think like us, even if they don't act like us, even if they don't look like us, let us move forward with love and with grace. Will you pray with me? Father, right now I pray for every heartbeat under the sound of my voice. I pray for these leaders and ask that you search their hearts and give them the wisdom, give them the discernment, the power, the zeal, the fervor, and the ability to recognize and implement your will. Father, I pray for their families and for this great state. Father, I ask that you place a hedge of protection around us and that you bless our elected leaders, that you bless our farmers, and that you bless every person throughout our great state and throughout our entire world. Father, we thank you for giving us the gift of today, for that is why it is called the present. We ask of all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.